Hello everyone! Welcome back to C2 Novel and Vocab Week 19! Wow! We've done so many of these together. I'm so glad that you always join me every week. So let's finish off the semester strong and keep watching them, okay? So let's get started. For those who are new, please keep continue watching. If you have watched these a few times, go and skip to the first word, okay? So hello, newcomers. My name is Miss Kimberly. And the goal of our session is to have students understand each word in your vocabulary workbook and to be cognizant, which means to know some of the phrases from the novel that may be difficult for you to understand. So I'll be here to help you in this video and let's get started. So what is our agenda? What are we doing today? So first, week 19 vocabulary. We will go over all of the words in this trusty workbook. Then we will go over the example sentences that I have made for us. And then, it's up to you. You have to review and self-study, okay? But why are we doing this? Why is my mom and dad making me watch this video? Because, one, this is for vocabulary acquisition. You're going to learn a lot of these words and it'll be something that you can always pull up and just use in your speaking and writing and thinking. But first, as it says here, by learning the definition, synonym, and antonym of a word, this can significantly and greatly improve your reading comprehension and enhance contextual usage. And also, two, why are we going over these extra example sentences? This is to help with your writing variation so that by looking at the variety of different example sentences that we have for this one specific vocabulary word that we are studying, students can learn how to use the word in different sentence structures in your writing, speaking, and thinking. So let's get started. Everyone, please go and get your vocabulary workbook if you haven't already. And please turn to week 19, which is page 112 and 113. And it should look like this. So number one, everybody please repeat after me, as you all know. Anesthetic. Anesthetic. It is a noun and it's a substance that makes you unable to feel pain. What? I want to do that all the time. No, no, no. It's only for specific times when you get an anesthetic and is also only admitted by someone who is very, um, a personnel who has that medical knowledge, like a nurse or a doctor or an anesthesiologist. So let's look at this example sentence. The dentist gave me an anesthetic before pulling my tooth out. <gasps> but usually this hurts also. Sometimes when you have to take a tooth out, and it's kind of like one of those stingy ones, where it's, uh, you have to get a shot, an anesthetic shot, a numbing shot, and then they will pull it out. So that when you pull out the tooth, it doesn't feel like any pain. You're just like, ah. <laughs> so repeat after me. The dentist gave me an anesthetic before pulling my tooth out. Good. Example one, before getting stitches for my knee, the nurse used an anesthetic to make the area numb so that it wouldn't sting. So stitches is when your skin is like pulled apart, right? It got ripped because, I don't know, you got hurt somehow. And then what they have to do is stitch it actually with needle or some kind of stitching string, or sometimes they just staple it. Anywho, I'm not a doctor. But before they do that, they need to put an anesthetic on it so that it doesn't hurt because it getting stitches will hurt a lot without that numbing anesthetic. Okay, example two. Before my surgery, the doctor gave me an anesthetic so that I would be in deep sleep during the procedure. So before you go into surgery, they will give you maybe like a mask. Like, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, count backwards from 10, 10, 9, and then you're sleeping because of the anesthetic so that you don't feel any pain, okay? Everyone repeat after me and say anesthetic. Great. Number two, everyone please repeat after me and say rigid, rigid. The synonym is tough and the antonym is flexible 
and the part of speech is adjective. So here, the definition says stiff or fixed, not able to bend or move. And the example sentence says the tower was made out of rigid steel. So this means this steel is very strong, it doesn't bend, and it's very stiff. It's hard. Okay. Repeat after me, the tower was made out of rigid steel. Good job. And example one, during the science experiment, we use a rigid ruler to measure the length of the different objects accurately. So sometimes there are many different types of rulers. They have like the flexible ones that you can bend and you know, play with. And then there's also the ones that are wooden that you cannot bend. Those are the ones that are rigid. Okay, example two. The bicycle had a rigid frame, which made it sturdy and reliable for riding on bumpy paths without wobbling. So a rigid frame means that the bike, when you look at a bike, it has a wheel and a wheel and then everything on the inside, right? And then the handle. So that frame has to be rigid and not bent, of course, or else you're gonna and then fall off your bike. <laughs> Everyone say rigid. Great job. Number three, repeat after me and say conspiracy. Conspiracy. It is a noun and the definition says the activity of secretly planning with other people to do something bad or illegal. Long time ago or still now, the word conspiracy is basically a negative word, but these days we can also use it in a positive way, which I'll show you later. The example sentence says, I think there was a conspiracy to bully the new student. So here in this picture, as you can see, the girls in the back bullying the girl in the front. There was a conspiracy. Maybe everyone was planning secretly to bully the student, which is not very nice. Mm -mm -mm. So repeat after me. I think there was a conspiracy to bully the new student. Good job. Example one, the superhero discovered the villain's conspiracy to take over the city. So here, the superhero found out that this evil villain was going to take over the city. So he was able to stop him. Example two, the group of friends had a fun conspiracy to plan a surprise party for their friend, complete with decorations and games. So here, this surprise party may not really be a bad thing, so we can, but we can still use this word here. Or we can think that this friend who is having their party for them doesn't want the party and they're trying to do it secretly. Okay, everyone say conspiracy. Awesome. Number four, the word is appalled appalled and the synonym is <gasps> horrified and the part of speech is adjective the definition says having strong feelings of <gasps> shock or disapproval so basically you really don't like it the example sentence says i was appalled by the horrible news horrible horrified Appalled, all makes sense. Very good. Appalled. So repeat after me. I was appalled by the horrible news. So you saw the news, you're like, oh, I hate this. Or, oh my goodness, I cannot believe that happened. <laughs> Example one. My mom was appalled when she saw the messy state of my room. Yikes. When I was growing up, my room was always messy because... I just didn't like to clean it. So when I was coming home, I just threw my clothes everywhere. And then she, my mom would be like, oh, Kimberly, clean your room. I'm so appalled. And example two, the students were appalled to learn that their favorite field trip was canceled due to bad weather. So they're like, no, I hate it. Why? I want my field trip. They were appalled. Awesome, number five, everyone. Repeat after me and say, lair. Lair. And the synonym is hideaway. 
and it is a noun, which means a place where a wild animal lives, often underground and hidden, or a place where a person hides, a lair, like a secret spot. The, the example sentence says, the raccoon was sleeping in its lair. So in this picture here, a raccoon is sleeping. It's this little place where he lives. Okay, repeat after me, the raccoon was sleeping in its lair. Good, example one. The spy infiltrated the enemy's lair, gathering information without being detected. Huh, there's some hard words in this sentence, right? Here we can say the spy broke into the enemy's lair, gathering information without being found. Okay, some two um, difficult words there. Sorry, I think I just heard thunder, but I don't think it's supposed to rain. <laughs> Example two. The explorers stumbled upon the bear's cozy lair in the cave, where it had gathered leaves and twigs for a hmm, comfortable rest. Good. So this lair is their cave where this bear lives. Probably going to hibernate because it has cozy little leaves and twigs everywhere. Number six, everyone say innocent. Innocent. The synonym is pure and the antonym is sinful. It is an adjective and it means of a person not guilty of a particular crime. So here, they're like, they didn't do it. So they are innocent. So we shouldn't blame them. Okay. Uh, woo. Repeat after me. Newborn babies are so pure and innocent. Newborn babies are so pure and innocent. Because these newborn babies, they have nothing that they did wrong. Example one. In the fairy tale, the princess had an innocent heart, always seeing the good in people and creatures around her. So this princess is like, la da la da la oh, this is a beautiful world, and I love all these animals, and these people are all so nice. Innocent. Or, example two says, the puppy's innocent eyes pleaded for forgiveness as it, after it accidentally knocked over the Tower of Blocks. So the dog's like, please. Although the puppy was not actually innocent, but he had innocent looking eyes. Good. Number seven. The word is a morsel. Morsel. And the synonym is nibble. And it is a noun, a very small piece of food. Very small morsel. And, oh my goodness, it just, there was lightning just now. I think it's raining. <laughs> Anywho, the sentence says, did you hear that? That was thunder. The mouse ate a morsel of cheese. So this mouse ate such a small, small, small piece of cheese. Poor mouse. So repeat after me. The mouse ate a morsel of cheese. Example sentence. During the picnic, the ants worked together to carry away every morsel of leftover crumbs. So sometimes you see all these ants like carrying big crumbs we don't want to call them crumbs because we know a better vocabulary word, morsel. Good. So let's go to the next one. Example two. The chef carefully plated each dish, making sure to include a morsel of every delicious ingredient. So here, there, this chef is trying to add in every little piece of the ingredient so that he can make his dish the best. Morsel. Number eight, the word is crafty. Everyone say crafty. The synonym is sly and the antonym is innocent. And the part of speech is adjective and the definition says clever, especially in a dishonest or secret way. The crafty witch pretended to be the children's mother. Oh my goodness. But in a very dishonest and secret way. I'm sure you heard that thunder just now. 
So, this witch was dishonest and she made some kind of spell pretending to be their parents or their mom. There was thunder again. Example one, the crafty detective solved the mystery by using clever tricks. So this detective maybe was dishonest and sly in a way to figure out the mystery. Example two, with his crafty abilities, he was able to sneak out and not be caught. So maybe this person was trying to leave the classroom without asking for permission. Oh, how bad. So the student was had his crafty and secret way to sneak out. <laughs> Number nine. We are on page 113 now. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Good. The word is anxious. Anxious. The synonym is antsy, and the antonym is calm. And the part of speech is adjective. The definition says worried and nervous. And the example sentence says, I get a little anxious when I see bees. I know when we're in a classroom and all of a sudden a bee flies in through the window, everyone gets a little bit anxious. They're like, ah, is it going to bite me? I'm so worried. So, repeat after me, I get a little anxious when I see bees. And example sentence one. It says, I felt anxious before the test because I wanted to do well, but was not as confident. So here, they're like, oh, I need to do really well on this test, but I don't know if I can, I don't know, did I study enough, I don't know, I don't know. They're anxious, they're worried and nervous. Which you will not be because you're studying with me. High five! Woo! And example two. The boy looked anxious as he was stepping into the haunted house because he was scared and nervous about maybe something's popping out at him. <laughs> Good. Number ten. The word is entire. Everyone say entire. And the synonym is all. The part of speech is adjective, and the definition says whole or complete with nothing missing. So the entire thing, everything. The example sentence says the entire cake was made out of chocolate. Yum! I love chocolate. So maybe I had a chocolate cake and a chocolate frosting, chocolate sprinkles, and then some chocolate on top again. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> so let's repeat after me. The entire cake was made out of chocolate. Example one. The entire class worked together to create a beautiful art mural that covered the entire wall in the hallway. Wow. I used the word twice in one sentence. Miss Kimberly, but that's repetitive. You should use a synonym. <laughs> but who knows? So entire class, everybody in the classroom used, did artwork on the entire wall, so the whole wall. Example two, my friends and I finished the entire bag of popcorn before the movie even started. Have you ever done that before when you're waiting for the movie to come on and you keep eating your popcorn and it goes da -da -da -dun, and then the lights go down and then you look, you have no more popcorn left. <laughs> Entire, the whole thing. Eleven, the word is overwhelming. Overwhelming. And the synonym is overpowering. And it's an adjective that means causing confusion because something is so great in number or effect. So it's like, oh my gosh, it's too much. It's overwhelming because it's too much and it's causing confusion for you. The example sentence says, the amount of work I had at my new job was overwhelming. So maybe you get in, they're like, please do this work, do this paperwork, do this work, do, go do that, go have this meeting. And you're like, ah, it's overwhelming, I'm so confused and it's just too much. <laughs> overwhelming. 
Repeat after me, the amount of work I had at my new job was overwhelming. Example at the bottom, one. I got an overwhelming amount of birthday presents and I couldn't wait to open each one. So meaning you got so many from all of your friends and family and you're like, oh, which one should I open? I don't know, I'm so confused, but oh, there's so many. This is a good overwhelming. Whereas the top sentence was not a good overwhelming. But this also may be a good overwhelming for example two. The variety of activities at the amusement park was overwhelming with roller coasters, games, and delicious treats to choose from. I love going to the amusement park because there's so many choices. But some people may think it's overwhelming and they're like, oh no, it's just too much. What should I do first? Overwhelming. Nice. The word for number 12 is perfectionist. Everyone say perfectionist. And it is a noun and perfectionist means a person who tries to do things without fault or error. They're trying to make it everything perfect 100%. Oh, can we do that? Example, he is such a perfectionist that he doesn't allow himself to make any mistakes. Although it may be good to be a perfectionist, but it's also good to, you know, learn from your mistakes. So it's okay to make mistakes. I'm talking to all of you. Repeat after me. He is such a perfectionist that he doesn't allow himself to make any mistakes. Example one. Huh, I use my name. Kimberly is a perfectionist. She always wants her work to be flawless without any mistakes. But trust me, there have been mistakes, as you already know from watching these PPTs. <laughs> like earlier, I was talking about thunder and rain and lightning, but now I'm not because I'm a perfectionist. Let's get back to it. <laughs> Example two, Emily's room is always clean because she is a perfectionist when it comes to keeping things in order. So this person, Emily, she likes to put everything in order. Maybe put, use a book, put it back. Use a brush, put it back. So she is a perfectionist when it comes to keeping things in order. Great. Number 13, everyone say satisfied. Satisfied. The synonym is pleased and the antonym is unhappy. The part of speech is an adjective and the definition says happy with something. As you can see in this picture, the adult and the child are very happy. The example sentence says, my mom was satisfied with my test score. Meaning she looked at the test and she goes, oh, good. I like it. Very good job. <laughs> Repeat after me. My mom was satisfied with my test score. Example one at the bottom. I felt super satisfied <sighs> after taking a long nap. So I don't know about you, but after I take a long nap, I feel super satisfied and super happy. I can like, I can do anything now. <laughs> Example two, the satisfied chef nodded as he tasted the soup that he had perfected. So as he was tasting the soup, he was tasting the soup. Mmm, good. He nodded because he was satisfied. He was happy and pleased with it. 14, everyone say appreciate. Appreciate. The synonym is cherish and the antonym is disvalue, so not value. And the part of speech is a verb and the definition says to be thankful for. The example sentence says, I appreciated my neighbor's help, so I decided to write a thank you note. Appreciate, to be thankful, to thank. Repeat after me. I appreciated my neighbor's help, so I decided to write a thank you note. Example one. I appreciate your help with my homework. Meaning, thank you for helping me with my homework. So instead of saying thank you for helping me with my homework, why don't you try this sentence next time. I appreciate your help with my homework. Maybe you can say that to your friends or your parents. Yes, in English. Yes, even though they don't understand, yes, just say it. <laughs> Example two, John learned to appreciate the value of teamwork 
while working on a group project with his classmates. So he was like, oh, now I know working in a team is great. I'm very thankful for it. They all helped me a lot. Appreciate. 15, the word is evidence. Evidence. The synonym is proof, and the part of speech is now. Let's look at the definition. Information or objects that support the truth. So some kind of proof to show that this information is correct. So example sentence, it says, the detective is still trying to look for evidence. So he's still trying to look for some type of information to help him solve his crime. Repeat after me, the detective is still trying to look for the evidence. Good job. Example at the bottom, one, the police officer gathered evidence from the crime scene, including fingerprints. That will help him a lot to solve the crime. And example two, kind of like the one above, there wasn't enough evidence, so the man was proven innocent of the crime. So here, maybe the top sentence is what happens before the second half sentence happens okay so because the detective is still trying to look for evidence they didn't have enough he was proven innocent evidence and oh my goodness already last word the word is impact impact the synonym is influence and the part of speech is verb the definition says to have an effect or influence on something. The example sentence says, the house robbery impacted the whole family. So maybe because of this robbery, the mom and dad had to work more. And then the children were scared of being home alone because of the robbery. So it had some kind of effect or influence on all of the people in the family. Repeat after me. The house robbery impacted the whole family. Let's look at a more positive sentence than the one above. Example one, planting trees can positively impact the environment by providing clean air because they give us oxygen. Or example two, reading books regularly, everyone, can impact a child's vocabulary and language skills in a positive way. So it's saying here, if you read books regularly, maybe every day for an hour, this can impact, it'll have a good influence on your vocabulary and language skills, which I hope everyone is doing, reading English books every day. Good, impact. Wow, we finished. Let's go all the way to number one. Repeat after me. Anesthetic. Two, rigid. Three, conspiracy. Four, appalled. Five, lair. Six, innocent. Seven, morsel. Eight, crafty. Nine, anxious. 10, entire. 11, overwhelming. 12, perfectionist. 13, satisfied. 14, appreciate. 15, evidence. And 16, impact. Good job, everybody. High five. Boo. Oh, wait. Boo. <laughs> now it is time for you to self-study and review. This is for contextual mastery. To become the masters of the words that we just studied, you must review all the words again. Please read out loud all two pages. Then I would like you to do the homework without flipping back and forth, back and forth. Only do this page without looking. Okay? 
Well, everyone, again, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad we just finished week 19. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Okay, till then.